Growing up, I was surrounded by talent. I have about four brothers, and they were all good at something, from electric bass to, to guitar to skateboarding to drums to BMX to charming the girls. Everyone who knew us called us the Bankhead Boys. My mom was an exceptional pianist organist. She could play any partition of music you laid in front of her and was always happy to share her talent at home with her friends and every Sunday at church. Her ability to read music always fascinated me as I would watch her turn these jumbles of dots on the pages into beautiful music. And I would study her eyes, the movements of her hands and her feet as she played, and even her posture, secretly trying to discover the, the one thing that would allow me to play as good as she would. I also spent my youth attending countless concerts where my father, a band and orchestra conductor, would come onto stage to the roaring applause of anticipating people step up onto his podium and guide a hundred musicians and singers with every stroke of his baton. It was moving watching my father there in the spotlight as he would share his interpretations of these great masterpieces through the musicians. Being surrounded by such creativity was inspiring for sure, but it was also difficult not because I felt comparison or competition from my brothers. They were great. And my parents always supported me unconditionally. But it was the expectations that I placed on myself that affected me the most. See, in everything I did, I feared that I wouldn't stand out, that I wouldn't be noticed, that I wouldn't have anything worthwhile to offer. And more than anything, I feared the judgment that might come if I opened up myself, my ideas, my creativity. And so anonymity became my armor kind of like the cloak of invisibility that Harry Potter wore. It was safe. So after trying out French horn and, and guitar, I found my instrument, piano. I inherited a pretty good musical ear, which enabled me to listen to most anything and copy it. So I played everything from classical to rock to jazz to even imitating other musicians' styles. I consider myself pretty mediocre. But being mediocre, in some respects, suited me just fine, because it meant that I didn't have to step out of my comfort zone. My mom, bless her heart, tried to get me to practice piano more, but with little success. But it wasn't because I was lazy, okay, maybe a little bit, I was a teenager, and it wasn't because I didn't care. It was because I was afraid that my efforts wouldn't pay off, that the result wouldn't be good enough. And this fear kept crept into other areas of my life. For example, I would put off doing school assignments until the last minute spending all of my time thinking up all the ways that my answers might be wrong or my thoughts would be insufficient. And then when time ran out, I'd have to quickly throw something together and turn it in, often just good enough to get a passing grade. Or I'd monitor everything I said to my classmates and friends, because heaven forbid I say something really different. I think in high school, I spent more time talking myself out of talking. Or watching that cute girl in my class from afar, but never getting up the nerve to go and talk to her. I could imagine every scenario in which she might reject me, make fun of me, or worse yet, just ignore me. And so, through all of this, it was difficult. But one day, I discovered something. It's a trap. See, more than anything, I wanted to be something. I wanted to be remarked. I wanted to be special. But I spent so much of my mental and creative energy focusing on my fear of mediocrity that there was nothing left in me for actually being creative. Ironically enough, it was the very fear of mediocrity that led me into mediocrity. And so began my journey into discovering what it is to expose myself. Step one was realizing that I had to stop stopping myself. In university, I was a jazz pianist, and I had this great idea for a solo. And I remember after the first time that I performed it, I looked up to the shaking heads of my band members and the blatant lack of applause from the crowd. It was a total failure as far as solo go solos go. And normally, I would have overreacted, thinking that my reputation was surely finished and that everyone hated me. But this time, I didn't let me stop myself. I said, OK, that stunk, but you've got a good idea here. And sure enough, a few performances later, I found out that my band members had all but forgotten my previous failure, my reputation was still intact, and my solo actually was pretty good. Step two was embracing my intrinsic value. Early on in my professional career, I used to hate networking events. You know, when you walk into a room and everyone's already in groups, engaged in interesting conversations, smiling and being really clever, and you have to walk around and try and find a group to wiggle into? It used to stress me beyond reason. Until one time, I was able to speak with a marketing professional that I idolized. 
I really looked up to this guy. And after a bit of small talk, he opened up to me. And you know what he told me? He said how much these events stress him out. I couldn't believe it. He was the same as I was. And so I made it a point to discreetly ask people that I met how they felt about certain things like meeting strangers. And almost without exception, I learned that corporate directors, diplomats, Hollywood stars, industry professionals, they all have their own insecurities. But they also have something else that empowers them. They recognize that they have something to offer. This realization helped me to be able to separate my opinion of myself from other people's opinion of me as I would present my ideas, my strategies, as I'd play piano, or as I'd negotiate conflicts. And the more I reminded myself of my own self-worth, not only was it easier for me to open up, but I found that people react positively to self-confidence. My third step was in realizing that today, mediocre just isn't good enough to succeed. I'm a marketer, and global economy has made it that no matter what you sell, someone else can probably make it just as good and probably for cheaper. Producing a good product or service is no longer sufficient. You have to be different. In global platforms such as LinkedIn, Facebook, Tumblr, YouTube, Twitter, give everyone a very powerful publishing medium that rewards creativity, but forces us to embrace the vulnerability that comes from global exposure. And I've handled hundreds of recruitments throughout my career. And more, more time goes on, the more I see very qualified individuals all vying for the same jobs. And it's those people who are able to open themselves up, share more of who they are and their creativity, and what makes them unique to get the jobs. In every region of the world, in every walk of life, there's one driver for creativity, one determining element for greatness. Whether you're an up-and-coming musician, a hopeful marketer, a successful business person, a loving father, or an inspiring leader. The one characteristic that they all share is their ability to drop their cloaks of invisibility and to share themselves and expose their ideas, come what may. I still struggle today with the temptation to go back into the safety of mediocrity. But safe isn't impressive. Safe isn't meaningful. Safe isn't polarizing. Safe isn't worth talking about. Safe isn't powerful. Safe isn't unforgettable. And safe isn't rewarding. The very courage that enables us to believe in ourselves, to face our fears, to develop our talents, to share our ideas, and to embrace our intrinsic value is the very courage that empowers us to express our creativity, to be our true selves, and to be outstanding. Thank you.